morning everybody it's Julie welcome back to Row and Co Farms so I want to take you on a little garden tour this morning because we haven't done that in a few weeks and my garden is doing pretty good I have a lot of things doing well I have a few things that are not doing so well but overall I think things are are busting <laughs> I've got and I mean that in a good way um, my plants are doing so good like my tomatoes are so big that they're falling over which isn't always great but at this point some of them are just they're doing okay so I'm leaving them be <laughs> so let's go in and let's take a look at the garden today it looks really amazing we've had rain in the last couple days so things are really growing strong so right here in this first bed we do have um, I did cut away a bunch of the bad growth but I do think we have a squash vine borer here in our um, cucumbers maybe they'll recover i'm not sure i've been putting stuff down and trying to treat them but I, I think we're gonna end up losing these guys but overall we're still getting lots of new growth so i'm gonna let them hold on as long as they can but yeah this one has made it pretty far oh, there's a pickle right there done really well i know this is this is probably three or four tomatoes in here. I did, I think I overplanted, obviously. But if you look in here, I do have a lot of tomatoes down here. I will not use this rope trellising system again. That really didn't work. I didn't put enough. So don't do that. Got a few beans down here. There's some beans on there. I need to probably get out here and look. Look at these squashes. Wow, they're huge. One of my cats is in here. Cheese! That's her name. Hey, Cheese. Zucchini baby down here. I have been putting um, diatomaceous earth down because I have seen a lot of squash bugs in here. Oh, my here. Okay, now check these out. I mean, aromas everywhere. <laughs> I mean, there are tomatoes everywhere. These are just some of my tomatoes. I pruned these yesterday. That's why they look so bare in there. They're not perfect, but they're getting the job done right now. Getting a lot of tomatoes. My peppers, some of them are not doing so well, but I think that's partly because the tomatoes were really crowding them out. So we have over here on this trellis is Kajari melon, which is a little small melon like that. It's like a mini size personal melon that you eat on your own. Oh, here's another one. Yep. I may have to get some of those little mesh bags to hold those up so they don't. Uh, look at this bee in here. It's just taking a rest. There you go. Hey, bee. So yeah, these are my melons going up the trellis there. On this side, I have some more cucumbers and they have not started producing yet. I planted those later and those are still healthy right now. So I hope I do get some more. Uh, cucumbers for pickles. So in this middle bed are my leeks. I harvested half of those uh, this week and I've already kind of packaged them up and frozen them. Um, and then I'm going to come out. Some of these are still really small. They're like, you know, maybe the size of my finger and that's still too small. So I'm going to let them get bigger. This one's a little bit bigger, but they're, they're just not quite there yet. So look if you see my trellises down here. Oh, I love that. They're so cute. So 
on this side is my asparagus, which is also doing wonderfully. This is a first year asparagus. So we will not, I did not harvest any of this. I'm just letting it, letting it grow. It's going to seed, which is what you want. You want these seeds to go down and, and, and reseed itself so that next year it grows even more. So if you look down here, you can see all these little asparagus growing out of here. And this is just gonna be filled next year with more and more. So next year we'll be able to harvest some of this, but really the third year is when it's the best to start harvesting as much as you want. But yeah, asparagus is, is a perennial, which means it's gonna come back every single year for 25, 30 years, maybe longer, because it's just gonna keep reseeding itself. And then moving down here, I mean, these are <laughs> tomatoes, beans. I mean, they're, these tomatoes I have not been able to get in here and prune very well because they're, they're behind this arch trellis. And then there's another, you can see in there, it's another, it was my um, trellis for the tomatoes, but it has fallen over. So everything is just really squished up in there. I'm surprised these are even doing very well, but they actually are, there are, are a bunch of tomatoes so we're going to let those be you can see in here there are a bunch more tomatoes so i do need to get out here and harvest green beans i have a lot of green beans growing up this trellis i finally have met in the middle you can see here green beans green beans Dogs. That's our dog, Bean. So another bean in the garden. Now this side, these cucumbers look pretty bad. You see all this dead stuff in here. I can come in here and clean some of it up, but I do think that I have a squash vine borer. Just the way that everything is kind of dying off, the way it looks, that's pretty indicative of that. I'm still getting some cucumbers off of here. But I think I'm gonna end up having to pull this guy out. It's just not, not healthy. So in here are my cherry tomatoes. And there are lots and lots of those in here. I've been getting bunches of them every day. There's still a few down here at the bottom that I haven't harvested yet. We have a lot. Zinnia in here. They're reaching. There's some up here too. Maybe we'll get some plants soon. But yeah, these tomatoes, these tomatoes are two feet taller than me. I'm about six feet tall, so they're really, really big. So this is one of my tomato plants, the whole cage back here. It's hard to, kind of hard to see. Whole cage fell over. And I have actually just left that plant alone because it's doing kind of well and I can't, it's so heavy, I just can't get it back up. Um, yeah, just lots of tomatoes. I mean, tomatoes, tomatoes. This is gonna be my year for tomatoes. just completely is on its side now but look at all these tomatoes in here I just don't want to disturb them there's so many and it's been like this down here for a couple weeks 
now it fell while I was on vacation so I just left it all right next bed over again more tomatoes uh, these are a variety of Brad's atomic grape and maybe there's another paste tomato or something in here but so these are Brad's atomic grape they're like a grape tomato, but they have like this really cool coloring on them. This is what they look like here. Well, see they're splitting. I just haven't had very good luck with these. They kind of turn this purpley, orangey, reddy color, but they're really disease prone. They split easily. I just have not had good luck with these. I've grown them. This is my second year and I will not grow these again. I uh, just, I don't, I don't care for them. So, I mean, you see right here, they look beautiful. This purple color that they start off with. But I just, I'd rather have something that produces strong, healthy plants. So in here, I did have a whole bunch of kale. I've been pulling that out because there's been cabbage worms on it. And I've just been feeding it to the ducks. So that's helped them out and helped me. Got a couple small zucchinis and squashes in here. They haven't really started doing anything yet. I think they're they look kind of yellow. I'm not sure what the deal is there. So this side, I believe these are my Rutgers tomatoes. And they're all of these just classic Rutgers, and I think I have beef steaks too. Those guys are just doing well, and I think. In the future, I'm going to stick with those kinds of tomatoes because they really do better. I may do a couple of heirlooms, but ultimately I feel like the hybrids tend to do a little bit better. And here we have a lot of banana peppers. I need to come harvest these today. Lots of those in there. There's another one back here. There's another squash. And then my loofah, my loofahs are, I mean, they're doing really well. This is my loofah arch. It's completely covered from end to end. If you look up here, you can see where all these are going to be more loofahs coming up. But yeah, they're, they're everywhere. I love this little archway. Look all the way up. I love my little tunnel. It's awesome. So this big mamma jamma right here is lemongrass. I need to cut it and it'll just grow right back. But yeah, we'll let, cut that and let it dry out. We we'll use that for tea. Uh, down here is some oregano. It's doing well. It probably could be bigger, but it's getting shaded out. But I think that kind of helps some of these things because it's just so hot here. Again, my tomatoes. There are tomatoes everywhere. pounds and pounds of them every day. So I need to come out here and prune this guy. There's some fungus on it. See that? So then over here, wow, the dahlias. I have learned now, I never grew dahlias before. These guys have to be staked up. They'll just fall over. But I mean, look at these. Look, my hand is behind them. You can't even see my hand. They are huge. Dinner plate dahlias. These will definitely be part of our flower farm offerings. They're so perfect. And look at those. So pretty. Okay, now, y'all, I, I just, I can't even talk about what a disaster this is. These are all just your standard tomato cages. I will never use these again. Never, never, ever, ever. 
everything is on its side. I'm just, I don't know what to do with them. So I'm just not, I'm not messing with them right now. I know that's poor gardening advice. I'm not giving advice. I'm just showing you what happened to me. So I have some great looking tomatoes on here as, as I have everywhere. And I'm just trying to do my best to keep up. There are lots and lots and lots of tomatoes in here to harvest. So that is my next tomato section there. Now here in this little middle bed, this is like one of my test flower areas, I'm just testing out a bunch of stuff. Um, you can see these sunflowers. I started all these real late, but you can see there's gonna be flowers all through here. These are about to bloom. Just have a nice head on them coming up. This one too. So there's some sunflowers. Then we have Cosmos here. They're getting ready to start blooming hopefully pretty soon. And then down here is Salvia. That's just supposed to be a nice kind of filler. I've got some stuff that looks like it just didn't do well. What is this? Hollyhocks. I'll have to try another batch of those. These are bachelor buttons and they're trying. Um, Celosia is doing well. You guys probably, you see the start of that. That's those things with the big plumes, red and orange, different colors. Those will be nice. There's a few more sunflowers down here. Oh, yeah. Started those late too. Now, let's look at these dahlias here. Again, they're all falling over because I'm a rookie and I didn't know that they would just continue to grow and fall over like this. But we have some really pretty varieties. This red one is really nice. This, this one here, I believe is called Duet. It's just a really pretty. Um, then we have this really, it's smaller. This is also a Dahlia, but it's, it's just really nice too to look at. All the pink on it. And then this one, it's small, but it's, it has this lovely red, deep red color. Ooh, excuse me, big bee flew in my ear. But this one is called Arabian Nights. And I just love it. And then we have some cana lilies here. They are huge. My neighbor gave me a few of those. And man, I don't think I allowed for enough space for those guys. And in here we have some zinnias. They're just starting to bloom. I've got some other little things coming up down here. Calendula. And... Is this? Oh, Echinacea starting to come up finally. It's been trying for a while. Got strawberries in that bucket there. Maybe some ready. Oh, yeah, there's one. And I'll be honest, I'm not sure what that tall thing is right there. Could be a weed, but I don't think it is because there's several planted together, <laughs> but I don't know. There's a random cabbage that's getting pulled because it's obviously uh, looks terrible. And up here, more sunflowers. And then down here, I've got some zinnias again. Go, Bumblebee, go. So they're starting to bloom. Nice to have. And then last few beds here. Um, I harvested out my onions. There was some in here that were rotten, and so I just left those. I'm gonna let them compost in place. But I uh, planted some okra a few weeks ago, and this is the few plants of that in here. So I'll be putting something else into this bed, um, some of my fall crops, but I'll probably wait uh, a few more weeks before I do that. It's just too hot right now. Um, this bed is just a 
mishmash of things. Mostly herbs, but there's a lone cherry tomato over here. Again, don't do what I do. Everything's falling over right now. There's a few um, squashes and zucchinis in here, which there's one that just doesn't know what it is. Look at this guy. It's a squash and a zucchini. We have lots of stuff in here. I don't know what this is. That's some kind of weed. The thyme here is starting to flower. This thyme has been here for a couple of years now. And it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So I'll probably have to divide that out. This bed here got sweet potatoes and okra. Our okra should start flowering really soon. Uh-oh. See some of those beetles on there. I'm gonna have to get out here with the neem oil. So yeah, so no um no blooms yet, but we are almost there. Look, right here, they're about to start. There's the first few. And the okra will be here next week. Looking forward to that. We love okra. Well, that's it, guys. Garden tour, July 2021. I'm proud of it. Thanks for joining us today, guys, here at Rowan Co. Farms. We'd love for you to join us over on Instagram. You can find me there every single day, Rowan Co. Farms. And you can also find us on our website, rowcofarms.com. We look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.